what we're working on this week is making a mold and castings from this wax model. And uh, <laughs> the thing about this guy is, no matter how you position him in the mold, whether it's this way, that way, it doesn't matter. No matter which way you position him in the mold, you're always going to have places where you're going to catch bubbles. No matter what you do, no matter what the orientation is or how you cast him, you're going to have a lot of bubbles. And that's a problem. So the question for this video is, can I make a mold with the proper sprues and vents to let the air out so that I can get a perfect bubble-free casting with minimal parting lines out of a one-piece rubber cut mold? Stick around, we'll see if I can do it. <laughs> I'm making the mold case out of plywood and ABS plastic pipe because both of those materials are cheap and available everywhere. I've already cut the plywood to fit, and now I'm just putting rabbits in each of the four edges. Here you can see how the plywood parts fit together really well with the plastic pipe. The mold is held together with blue painter's tape, which is simple to put together, but also really easy to take apart. I use the assembled case to mark out the shape for the base. And cutting it out is quick and easy on the bandsaw. Then all I gotta do is bring it over to the big wheel, the 20 inch sander, and clean it up. It cleans up super nice, but you gotta watch your fingers. All right, time to see how it fits. Oh, look at that. I astound myself. <laughs> Same routine on the bottom base. Just cut it out on the bandsaw and clean it up on the big wheel. And then I can get the case assembled, which means it's time for beeswax. If you've watched my channel before, you know that bees are maybe my favorite animal on the earth. Not only do they pollinate everything we eat, they also make the most amazing substance, and that is beeswax. It's just the perfect mold release agent because nothing will stick to anything you coat with beeswax. Epoxy won't stick to it. Urethanes won't stick to it. It's just about the perfect release agent, and I use it on almost every project. It's fantastic stuff. The great thing you're looking at is a funnel from a previous casting, and I've attached it to a wax base. This model is heavy enough and out of balance enough that I need a strong sprue. So here I'm using a length of 8 inch welding rod to serve as a backbone on the main sprue. The sprue is the channel that the resin flows down into the mold through. I bend it and cut it and keep fiddling around with it until I get the model in the right position. But the thing is, eighth inch is not really thick enough. I try to make the main pouring sprue proportionate to the model, and I want the resin to flow in rapidly. I use wax to build up the sprue to the correct thickness. This is just born of experience and having made a lot of molds, so I kind of know just by eye the correct proportion of the sprue to the mass of the casting. If the sprue is too narrow, the resin may pour too slowly and you may not be able to fill the mold before the resin starts to gel. If it's too big, you just have a big area to clean up on your casting, and that's just a waste of effort. Now I'm ready to move on to the vents. Because the model is so close to the base here, I'm just going to build up the vent with using regular sculpting wax. But here, the, the run is much longer, and so I'm going to form the vent out of this blue wax rod, which is made exactly for this purpose. It's sold by jewelry supply places, and it's very easy to bend in shape into just exactly the right vent. I changed my mind and decided to run the vent to the back of the head. Running it to the base would have made a much longer parting line, and I'm always looking for the simplest solution, the one that is going to be the easiest to clean up in the castings. And I think, just a judgment call, I decided to do it this way. Okay, I think we're looking pretty good. I am relatively confident that this model is going to vent correctly. The resin is going to flow down that big sprue and rise perfectly up out of those vents. And we should come up with a perfect casting. Okay, so now we can finally assemble this case for real. Having done that, we can now seal the inside of the mold case with beeswax. Beeswax is just perfect for this job because it will just make a perfect watertight case. And it's good that it can, 
because rubber will escape out of the most microscopic cracks and you cannot believe how tiny a crack rubber can ooze out of. And once it starts oozing, it's very hard to plug up. So it's really important to get a watertight case and um, this will do the perfect job. After that, it's a simple enough matter to put some sticky wax on the bottom of the model and fix them to the bottom of the case. Then we're ready to pour rubber. In these scenes, I'm mixing up the rubber and I don't know why. I shot them all in vertical format. I have no idea how that happened. Oh well, it doesn't really matter. In the panel on the left, I'm shaking up the hardener and that's super important because you've got to mix it up well. You've got to shake it thoroughly. In the middle panel, I'm weighing it out. And I like to weigh out the hardener first because that way it coats the walls of the container. And then, like in the third panel, when I add the rubber, the rubber resin itself, uh, it uh, doesn't stick to the walls of the container and it's much easier to mix. Okay, now I can stir, stir, stir and uh, just keep going until I get it thoroughly mixed. It's beautiful because nothing's sticking to the sides, but I am mixing a lot of air into the rubber. And that's what we have the vacuum chamber for because it does a beautiful job of sucking out all the air that is entrained in the rubber. I guess I was just having a bad day. I, I filled the mold case with rubber and didn't get any of it on camera. But then I had a brilliant idea. I said, I can salvage something fantastic out of this. So I substituted a plastic panel uh, for the plywood panel in the front. That way you guys could watch the mold fill up. Oh, and here's a little trick that I did. I wasn't 100% sure that that plastic panel wouldn't leak, especially at the bottom. So I put a small amount of rubber in there and I let it gel up. You can see here that it's gelled up in the cup. And then when I poured it, I knew it wouldn't leak. As usual, as always, I pour from the bottom up every time. That's the rule. Keep that in your head. If you learn nothing else <laughs> from this channel about mold making, pour from the bottom up and let the rubber push the air above it out of the way and get yourself a nice, clean, perfect bubble free casting. It's the next day and now we can take the mold case apart and get the rubber nicely trimmed up. This is going to be a complicated mold to cut. And so I made this little animation to show you the four cuts that I'm going to make to free the model from the mold and to create the parting line. The most intimidating part about cutting open a silicone mold is knowing where to cut. When I sprue and vent the model, I'm really careful to kind of plan out exactly where my cut is going to be. It really helps me to locate all and route the vents and sprues. And also it helps me to predict where my parting lines are going to be. What you don't want is parting lines crossing any critical areas like details on a face. You want to hide them as much as possible. You want to make the cuts jagged so the mold locks back together and the surfaces don't slide around because that's what gives you the really clean parting lines. It's ironic that a jagged surface is going to give you the cleanest parting line, but it really does. It's really important that the mold remain in one piece. In other words, you don't want to cut it into separate pieces. And the reason for that is if the mold is all in one piece, it will hold together and close up back together much more accurately and much easier than if you make the mistake of cutting the rubber into several separate chunks. I've tried it. It doesn't work. And I can tell you it's much better to make a one piece cut mold. Sometimes when you cut a mold open, you will damage the model. Depending on what it is, you may leave all kinds of debris inside of the mold. Hopefully none of it will be bonded to the rubber, but you will have to clean out the mold. For that reason, I call the first casting out of any mold the clean out casting. But I do my best to try to get the debris out of the mold as much as possible before I pour the first resin. You can almost never find rubber bands that exactly fit the mold. Sometimes I have to tie them together to lengthen them, but in this case I just tied knots in them to shorten them. You want to put just the right amount of pressure on the rubber, just enough to close it. If you use big strong rubber bands or if you put too much pressure on the mold, you will deform it. And when you deform it, two things happen. One, you deform the, the actual casting and it comes out all misshapen. And also, and worse, you cause the parting lines to open up. 
and then you find all you get all kinds of flashing and, and, and things that are difficult to clean. So you don't want that. You want just enough rubber band pressure to hold the mold together perfectly. I'm weighing the wax model to figure out how much resin I need for the first pour. The ratio of my wax to my resin is 1 to 0.8. A 100 gram wax model will need 80 grams of resin to fill the cavity. So that's a useful guideline for figuring out how much resin to use for the first casting. Obviously, after you've made the first casting, you'll know exactly how much resin it takes to fill the mold, and you can measure out precisely what you need. All right, it's time to mix some resin. I put dye in the resin, but that's for you guys. Uh, it's really hard to see white castings on video. And so I uh, add a little, throw a little color in there. It's really powerful stuff. You don't need to add very much. Resin is a two-part system, A and B, and it's equal parts, but by weight, not by volume. And that is critical. You cannot uh, measure this stuff like a cup of each because your ratios will be all off. So uh, everything has to be weighed out. I use this old gram scale because in the 35 years I've owned it, it's never needed a single battery. It's always there, always working, always reliable. I love it, it's perfect. Stir up the resin thoroughly, but quickly. You wanna get it in the mold as fast as you can. Uh, it's ready to come out of the mold in about a half an hour. So you don't have too much time to get it poured. As you can see in this little time lapse, resin changes color when it cures. It's darker when it's uncured and it lightens as it cures. Good, let's pop that thing in the tank. And uh, put the lid on. And we'll run that thing at about 80 pounds per square inch. And just wait till it's ready. This valve lets the air out of the tank. We can pull it out. Yep, we're hard as a rock, ready to go. <laughs> and now for the fun part. This is my favorite part. This is, I just always get a kick out of it. It's so much fun. I love pulling things out of molds. It's like Christmas every day in my shop because it's fun to pull things out of the molds. This mold, uh, you want to be careful. It's a little bit of a delicate mold, but for no other reason than... Uh, it's kind of wrapped up in there. You see how that center section is is uh, kind of trapped in there. So you want to just kind of ease it out and not tear the mold in any way. If you're careful, it pops out perfectly. Uh, no problem at all. No, and uh, let's see. Let's check this casting out. Yeah, it is absolutely flawless. There's not a bubble in it. No surface flaws. Just perfect. That's exactly the result we want to get. Just nice, clean, tight castings, very minimal flash. I don't, I don't consider that to be terrible flash. As you can see, you can just take a knife and uh, clean it up. It's just not gonna take a lot of, it's not gonna be a really difficult project uh, to remove all those parting lines. So that's a success. Now, all that's just left to do is just, just uh, cut these sprues and vents off and then some sanding and some scraping and uh, we'll have a nice finished casting. Very pleased with how this came out, and it's looking really good. And let's take one last look at the mold. As you can see, it's just, it's cut jagged, so it locks together. It's perfectly clean. It reassembles perfectly, and uh, it, does, it does a beautiful job. It'll be good for 15 to 20 castings before it begins to wear out, maybe more. But uh, look at those parting lines. Look how clean and tight that is. That is exactly what you want to see when you make one-piece cut molds. We learned a lot today. We learned that we can take any complicated shape, make a one-piece cut mold out of it, and uh, get perfect castings with minimal cleanup. I hope you liked the video, and I hope you got something out of it. If you did, hit the like button. And uh, if you haven't done so, please subscribe. It really helps the channel out. Uh, I'd love to hear from you if you have questions or comments. Uh, if you just, uh, <laughs> you know, whatever you want to tell me, I'm, uh, I read all my comments, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.